by O'Quinn and Associates, Murphy Butter Supply, Vans Barbecue, and First Southern Bank. Are you looking for an insurance company that you can call and talk to a live person? Are you looking for an insurance company where you can walk in and talk to an agent? Are you looking for an insurance company that offers multiple companies so they can try and get you the best rate? If you said yes to any of these, then you need to call or come by Oakwin and Associates Insurance Financial Services. We offer multiple companies so we can find the best fit for you. Give us a call at 385-1000 or stop by our office at 212 South First Street right here in Jessup. Since 1946, Murphy's Builder Supply has been serving the folks of Jessup, Wayne, and surrounding counties with quality products and knowledgeable service. Matter of fact, they feel they sell service first to make sure you get exactly what you need for your home improvement projects. And with each employee at Murphy's being there for 10 years or more, you know you're talking with someone with the experience to help you with building supplies, tools, paint, and all the things you need from a full-service hardware store. The best choice in home improvement is Murphy's Builder Supply, 156 Northeast Broad Street, Jessup. When it comes to barbecue, Vans Barbecue and Jessup is the place to be. A small family-owned business located at 1876 on the Savannah Highway. Vans Barbecue has lunch and dinner specials. Stop by or call to make an order. The number to call, 427-3358. Vans Barbecue's new manager is Sarah Van. Vans Barbecue offers potato salad, coleslaw, baked beans, and don't forget their delicious mac and cheese. Also, check out their shrimp plates, the best in town. Yes, when it comes to the barbecue, head to Vans Barbecue, locally owned and operated. Stop by and tell them the big dog sent you. Once again, the number to order, 427-3358. Hi, I'm Raymond Brown. And I'm Mandy Yeomans. At First Southern Bank, our customers are like family. As a locally owned community bank, we're dedicated to helping our clients succeed. We have loans for every need, whether it's personal or business. We have lines of credit, auto loans, equipment loans, and of course, we offer mortgages. Stop by our bank or call us at 912-588-1010 and see how First Southern Bank can help you. Member FDIC Equal Housing Lender. The following is an exclusive presentation of Jessup Broadcasting, the sports leader in Southeast Georgia. The world famous Butch and Bob Show. World famous Butch and Bob Show right here on WIFO 105.5 FM in Jessup, Big Dog Country Radio. And Bob, we got a special guest on the phone with us this morning. Yes, Tuesdays with Tillery, got State Senator Blake Tillery on the phone. He knows all about the budget. They signed the mid-year budget. The governor signed it. They had a big press conference yesterday in Atlanta. Were you on hand for the press conference, Blake? I was. They don't let me skip that one. Uh, they said they had 12. They didn't list all the lawmakers. They just said they had a, uh, about a dozen lawmakers there along with the, the lieutenant governor and also the um, high speaker, John Burns, on hand, but they didn't list your name. So just want to make sure you were on hand for the big press conference. Hey, it's it's okay. The the big guy can get the credit for that one. He did a lot of the work. So appreciate the governor's help to get to where we are. Well, tell us about the mid-year budget. A lot of money in there. Like the governor says, a lot of the money's coming back to taxpayers of the state of Georgia. So people are happy about that. But there's a lot of money going elsewhere. I saw where they're giving uh, $1 billion back to the Georgia DOT for that lost revenue for the motor fuel tax that they suspended all that time. So explain the budget for us. Yeah, there's... $3 billion in the amended budget that you can directly attribute uh, back to our citizens, back to taxpayers. $1 billion on uh, $950 million on a homeowner tax relief grant. It's going to help lower property taxes in 2023 for folks in Wayne County. Um, there's a billion in an income tax refund, $250 per folks who file, for, per file or up to 500 for a couple. And then there's about $1.1 billion to back fuel, fuel motor fuel funds at DOT when the governor suspended motor fuel taxes, saving folks about $0.30 cents a gallon uh, during the middle of that gas price uh, hike that we saw over the summer and into the fall and then even into the winter. So um, $3 billion there, of course, funds going elsewhere to keep government operating, true-ups of the um, TVE formula for schools, a lot of money going into mental health, a lot of money going into foster care, hoteling, something we've talked about on this this uh, call before, to make sure that we're taking care of our youth, particularly those who are in our care. And uh, from there, you roll right into the 24. In fact, I'm over in the Senate Budget Office right now this morning meeting with Commissioner, uh, the Commissioner of the Bu- Department of Behavioral Health, Kevin Tanner, and then Russell McMurray, the DOT commissioner, is right behind him. We just took a stop right here to 
call back home and talk to you guys. If you just joining us on the phone with us, State Senator Blake Tillery, as you mentioned before we get on air, a mad dash uh, between now and the end of the month. A lot has to take place. A lot of bills will be debated. Uh, whether they pass or not, that's still up in the air. So what do you see getting across the finish line? What are some of the things you don't see seeing the finish line? Well, yeah. Well, right now, I'm uh, watching on the TV in the corner of the room here. Um, Stephen Meeks is, is arguing for the truck weights bill right now as we speak. Started about 7 this morning. Uh, would raise the weights for trucks uh, as they carry forestry goods, aggregate goods, goods to market in our state. It would raise the variance from 84,000 to 88,000 pounds. So we're watching that argument go on in Senate Transportation right this minute. Um, and then we've got six six bills and one resolution on the floor today after uh, we'll go into session at 10 after these committee meetings end this morning. Everything on the docket concerning uh, things concerning state health benefit plan biomarkers, which allows you to have biogenetic testing if they think you're at predisposed predisposed to certain cancers. Um, ad valorem tax relief when you have a federal disaster area, so like if a tornado comes through and destroys a home, should we tax it that November as though it was still there because we tax as of what the home looked like on January 1st. The things we've already mentioned about the motor fuel uh, suspension, we have to ratify that this morning. That's House Resolution 66. If we ratify that, then it essentially finishes off the governor's suspension of motor fuel funds uh, over the past nine months. If we don't, then all the folks who bought fuel by law are supposed to pay that tax back. I think it's pretty clear we'll ratify that this morning. And then also the uh, income tax um, return, the one we talked about for 250 per file and 500 per couple, that's House Bill 162. That's on the Senate floor this morning today, too. So a whole bunch of uh, bills that are important just to people's pocketbooks, the nuts and bolts they expect us to get done every day. Those are some of the big items on the floor today. You mentioned Stephen Meeks. We talked to him yesterday about his bill. Again, he mentioned the DOTs not in favor of his bill. He said he only needs one more vote to pass it than not pass it. How do you see that playing out? Do you think it'll get passed? Yeah, I don't know his vote count. I know he's in Senate Transportation this morning. Right now it looks like it's going. Uh, I can't tell you how it's going to go. Um but it's something that I've supported. I, I think we've ran with trucks at 95,000 pounds since the pandemic. 88, I get the commissioner's point that it does put more wear and tear on the roads, but I also think we put our businesses at a competitive disadvantage if we don't allow them to run it at the 88,000 marker. And I think Stephen's done a great job of trying to figure out how to use uh, extra axles to distribute that weight in a way that we can, um, can do it fairly. Uh, I do think, you know, he's not knocking down the penalty if you're over. You know, the variance penalty is high. So I think that that will, uh, in the end, probably pass. I don't know if it passes this year or next, but it's something that I've supported. So over the years, at the last minute, some bills try to get snuck in at the last minute. Um, you know, they're saying that the gambling issues on life support, uh I talked to Stephen yesterday, we asked him, we asked him to give us the odds on it passing or not passing, but he just laughed. So, <laughs> right, but I called that. I called that play on words there. The odds. Yeah, he said that. he said it was fifty fifty. So <laughs> we'll ask you what you think. Uh, I'd probably parlay that bet. And, uh, <laughs> get a teacher. Uh, yeah, I need that. That'll be good. <laughs> I don't know the answer. Well, is it is it still being discussed at all? I mean, or are they. I mean, the word is that horse racing kind of threw it into a monkey wrench at the last minute, so I'm, I'm not sure you know more about it than I do. Yeah, I, I think uh, folks in our community are still uh, conservative on ma measures of gambling. They understand that it has secondary effects on families. Uh, we've seen that with just the COAM machines at gas stations in our community. Um so I think, think folks are pausing there. Even liberal states like California, when they had a chance to pass a constitutional amendment on this last year, they rejected it. So um, the, the wall may be a little bit higher. The bar might be a little higher than, uh, than some folks like to admit. No, I went back. I told Stephen I went back to the eggs and issues that you all had here in Wayne County at the Tech Center. 
And one thing that had a lot of momentum at that time was to do away with the runoffs in the state of Georgia, but I saw where that just failed, and uh, Stephen says that kind of got muddied as well, but they don't see that passing, but we're only one of three states that have the runoffs. Yeah, anything dealing with elections right now ends up with partisans on both sides. And when you end up with such uh, vitriolic conversation from both sides, on one you're told you're not done enough to protect elections, and on the other you're told that you're suppressing votes. Um, you know, when that kind of fireworks start and the circling fire squad begins, usually nothing happens. I saw Bill Workhiser Saturday. He was here to play golf, and you know the vote on the budget was 167 to 1. I said, who is this one person? He told me it was. He, he, I mean, 167 to 1. There's always one in there. <laughs> yeah, we've got some in our in our body, too. So there'll probably be one in our body. But what I just heard you say is that while I was up here at the Capitol working <laughs> on the budget on Saturday, Bill Workheiser was playing golf. That's a good thing to know. I'm making a mental note of that. <laughs> Bill, hey, he was, he was wearing his state Capitol uh, legislative hat, though. He was, he was wearing that. It looked pretty good. <laughs> Well, Workhouser gets his work done early, gets it done quick. Maybe I just could take notice from him. <laughs> he's still he's going through withdrawal. See, we had that Wednesday with Workhouser, you know, he's trying to get back in. So I thought we'd have to get him in after the session one time because I said he's always welcome. Yeah, he he's a great guy. He's working hard. He helped me get a bill through committee yesterday. In fact, him and Stephen Meeks, if it weren't for them, my bill that essentially wrecks telemarketing. Um I think, folks, it's the most positive response I've gotten on a bill I think I've ever done. Um, it uh, it goes at the heart of telemarketing. It's like, look, we've got a Georgia Do Not Call list. If you're going to violate it, we're going to fine you, and we're going to let people sue you about it. Um, it got opposed by the U.S. Chamber. I don't know why. That's, there must be a lot more money in telemarketing than I realize. Uh, but had it not been for Bill Wertheiser and Stephen Meeks, that bill wouldn't have made it out of committee yesterday. Right. So what's on schedule for you today? Um, Commissioner McMurray is standing outside the door right here waiting to come in. I've got to go finish this meeting with uh, Commissioner Tanner, the DVHCD commissioner, and then we will hit caucus and then the floor of those six bills I talked about, and then I'll probably be locked up in a hole going over the $32 billion of state uh, taxpayer dollars that our citizens send up here to make sure we provide efficient government. So that's my day, and uh, appreciate everybody back home letting me do it. Okay, before we let you go, again, if anybody wants to get a hold of you, what's the best way to do it? Just call me or text me. My cell phone number hasn't changed since I asked you to vote for me the first time. It's 912-245-9915. And, again, uh, I know the folks from the youth leadership from Wayne County are going to be up here next Monday. That's going to be a busy, busy day. They're going to get to see a lot. Uh, but if anybody else is coming uh, before then, y'all feel free to give me a holler. Okay. Again, I always appreciate you being here on Tuesdays with Tillery, State Senator Blake Tillery. Again, stay safe in Atlanta, and, and good luck with the rest of the session. Thank you, guys. Have a good right. Take care, Blake. All right, State Senator Blake Tillery right here on the world-famous Butch and Bob show right here on WIFO. That's pretty good, Bob. He had an important meeting with the department head there, and he just said, can you step out, please, while I talk to the folks back home? And uh, he did that and then has somebody waiting behind him. When you're uh, in charge of the budget, Bob – you got a lot of folks lined up at your door to get in to get their piece of the pie. Yeah, apparently, he doesn't have time to go play golf. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's in charge of the budget, Bob. Sound like, it sounded like he was upset that Bill was playing golf Saturday. <laughs> Bill likes when that you're in charge of the budget, it's a whole different ballgame. Well, Bill likes that 1230 group. He comes all the way over. So. Yeah. That's a good time. Man's Barbecue's got another Thursday special. So they we'll, do. I we'll, we'll want to plug this in the, another All You Can Eat Seafood Day. Full shrimp eighteen ninety five, fried shrimp twenty three ninety five, and crab legs thirty nine ninety five. All we can eat seafood this Thursday at Vans Barbecue. So, check it out this, this Thursday, Thursday at Vans. Vans, yep. Vans Barbecue on the Savannah so, Highway here in Jessup, right at the base of the Highway three hundred one bypass. So, if you like seafood, Thursday's the day. I know well, you like Bob, seafood, Bob. You I seafood, love, you like it. Right? That's right. <laughs> I like shrimp. That's for sure. Should be in town Thursday. I said doubleheaders Friday. That's right. I hope the rain right here. holds off Friday. I see that that's the day the rain's coming. That's, that's the, the greatest chance of rain is Friday, Friday night and Saturday Friday. morning. That's yeah. St. Patrick's Day. But then, of course, you're going all the way up to Burke, so I don't know what the weather there's going to be. Yeah. yeah. So but I know here, but this is this is Tuesday. You know, things can change by Friday. So just right now, we're looking for that uh, good chance of rain. Yeah. I don't think there's any rain expected today in Burke. Weather forecast no, no, should be No, today's good, just sunny. So. I don't know why. 
But that's Friday night and Saturday morning, the greatest chance of rain here for this week here in southeast Georgia. And go get a win. Region play starts today, so All right, going up go to the Yellow Jackets. Burke County to take on them today in our first region game. Long trip. Yep, the longest trip of the year other than playoffs. Okay, and that's the reason why they're coming down here for a double header on Friday so they don't have to keep their kids up late at night uh, on a school night. Exactly. And then next week we start over with another region opponent, right? The Islands, I think. The Islands. The next huh? opponent, yeah. Okay. That's one of those back and forth. Yeah. Two games the rest of the Islands, back one and forth, game back at home. Yeah, so. One there, two here, or two here, one there for next week. Be interesting what kind of these ballparks look like. I said this new region hasn't seen these ballparks, so yeah, be interesting what – Kind of facility Burke County is. I know they got a nice football facility. We've been there several times, but haven't really played them in baseball in a while. So it'd be interesting to see what their facility looks like. Okay. I'm looking to see what the islands look like, too, where they play. I keep hearing about the islands. I don't that's where the islands is. Somebody said this is on an island. Yes, it is. There's, there's <laughs> islands out there. There's a couple of islands right there in the high school right there. <laughs> never, never. <laughs> right. It's right there east of, uh, of the main part of Savannah. Of course, it'd have to be east because it's the islands out there. You know, they're below Tybee. That's what GPS is for, so just punch it in. <laughs> I don't trust GPS. I'll look at a map and get it ma- mapped out that way before I go somewhere. So, um, I, I did. I did one time when I was going and uh, taking my dad one time a few years ago, back in uh, 2017, after he broke his hip to the doctor over there. I did a GPS on his car because his car had it and following it. It sent me through a neighborhood to get to that hospital, a neighborhood, when all I had to do was to go up a few more blocks, turn left there at the hospital, go around the back side of the hospital. But uh, I said, I ain't doing this anymore. I had me going through a neighborhood. I mean, just turn this way and turn that way to a neighborhood to get to this hospital. And where I could just stay on the main roads and got there so much quicker. Ball in the GPS. I saw something the other day where this woman, you know, uh, drove her car into a pond because she was following GPS. Well, look what's in front of you, you know? <laughs> I heard some water out there. <laughs> well, the GPS told me to go this way. Well, the GPS told you to drive off a cliff. Would you do it? <laughs> yeah. You, you got to, you know, trust technology to a certain point, Bob, and then let common sense kick in. Uh well, you read all this stuff. I mean, Elon Musk and, and people like that are just, uh, they're a little worried about the way that AI is developing and uh, becoming just so smart right now and uh, in the direction that it's heading. So it'll be interesting to see how it develops over the next five years. All right. So you got to Wayne County Varsity Baseball this afternoon. The JV team won yesterday. Is that correct? Yeah, beat Jeff Davis in a. Thriller 5-4 scored the winning run on a wild pitch, 5-4. Okay, and the golf team? Golf team's rolling. Moving right along. Whipped up on Statesburg yesterday in the Waycross today, taking on Brantley, Ware, Glenn, and Brunswick. So that'll be a good match over there at Laura Walker. It's a nice state park, nice mm-hmm. golf course over there. So. Yeah, I've been capping there before. It's nice. And uh, so all that's going on. And uh, anything? Soccer the soccer team's in action The soccer team? Home. They're at home against Southeast. Southeast Bowl. I think it's Southeast Bowl. There's so many, there's so many sports going on. There's a Middle lot of well, springtime. You got all crazy. these different sports teams playing. I'm make sure I get track the right, team. You know, and everybody's the going right at team. It. I know they're at home today. Five and seven are the matches. For soccer. Soccer. Okay. I think it's soccer. Five and seven today at the I soccer think field it's there. Southeast at J C yeah, Stadium. It is. It's Southeast Bowl. Five and seven today at the high school soccer fields. Okay. Tennis teams are at home. As well, I think they're taking on the islands. They won yesterday, or the girl, the boys won, girls lost, but a lot going on. Appreciate the results of the Swamp Relays, got that today. Yeah, appreciate those coaches and, and assistants sending on. those in to us. Yeah. There's so much going on, we can't be everywhere, but y'all can send it to us, and we'll have it on there and give those uh, kids the publicity they deserve. And the program waiting with bated breath what Aaron Ross are going to do. You What's know? Aaron going to do, Bob? I don't understand Aaron. You know, he went to the darkness to clear his mind, but it seems like every came out of the darkness, his mind's all muddy. Well, it's not muddy. It's working can't out make the a, deals on, on, can't on, make up his on mind. money, Bob. It's always about the money, honey. He's sitting there working out the deal. How, how many millions are you going to pay me, Jets? Yeah. It always Bay, comes down to that, Bob. 
If he stays in Green Bay, they're supposed to give him sixty million, but they don't want to pay him. So they don't trying, want. They don't want him there. Him Not even the fans the want door. him there. They want him gone. I don't know about that. I don't know. There's, there's, a lot of, there's, the whole, there's a lot of Packer fans that love Aaron Rodgers. Well, they don't want somebody there who don't want to be there. You know, you got a guy here who's flirting around, going and stuff like that. You know, if he wanted to be there, he could just say, no, I'm coming back and I'll pocket the six mil, 60 million. Doesn't seem like he's jumping to go to the Jets. They say, I don't know. But like I said, don't know. Either, why aren't the deal already done? Everybody because else is. When you're dealing with that complicated and that many millions and all the stuff, it takes a little I while think, to get I think, all put I just together. think he's a strange bird. Yeah, well, he is strange, but strange. You know, he can play quarterback I think, pretty I think well. he needs to go back in the darkness. And <laughs> go back in the darkness. <laughs> get his mind right. I think his mind's all muddy since he came out of the darkness. Really all muddy? Uh, I don't know. It's he's like just he's in a fog. Sitting there. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm just sitting there thinking about those millions. I can make more here. Do I make more there? You know, do I have a better chance of winning there or a better chance of winning here? I don't know, Bob. I don't see it when New York guys don't see it. I think Green Bay's a better team than New York. Uh, but they want apparently they want him gone. Yeah, they're, they do. They're tired of they're, dealing. They're tired of dealing with him. Yeah, you get uh, tired of dealing with something like that. You just get get that headache out of there and let's move on. Yeah, they did that with the former quarterback when they put um, Aaron as the starter back many moons ago. All right, anything going on locally news-wise that we need to take an eye on? The school board has a meeting today. School board yeah. meeting today, huh? Yeah. They need to encourage their teachers to go vote for the East Bloss. I mean, that's, that East Bloss vote's just, that's a crapshoot right now with that few of people voting. How many they, so far? 300 and 375 and, and uh, the rest of the week and next Tuesday. But it's a very important East Bloss. But, you know, you got over 800 educators, and you only got 375 people voting, so. Somebody needs to get to the polls and make sure that thing passes. That'd be a bad thing if it doesn't pass. But with that few votes. You it, never can tell what's going to happen. That's what I'm saying. Votes. You don't know. Well, you don't know hopefully the vote. folks will start turning out in droves over the next, you know, got all this week and you got next week, right? No, no this week, week and then next Tuesday. Next Tuesday. Yeah, this week and next Tuesday. So you got Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then next Tuesday. No early voting on. And right. Saturday, right? Nope, no, no Saturday. Saturday, just Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Right. They've already had two Saturdays. Okay, and then the election day on Tuesday. Yeah. Well, see, that's when I'll vote. That's, I mean, I'm an election day voter myself. And so, but you got um, how many registered voters? 17,000, you said? Over 17,000. 17,000 registered voters and three cerns something of a voting. <laughs> Not much interest. <laughs> it's important for them, you know, but like I said, my, my thing is you got over 800 educators. Where, yeah, are, they, where they, are they at? Think they I mean, be, they think they'd be driving to the polls and getting their relatives to vote. You'd think you'd have at least 15, 2,000 votes already. Yeah, you think. If, they, if it's that important, but it doesn't seem like it's important to anybody right now. It's like a little turtle going to vote. <laughs> 15 a day, 20 a day, not many people. Still a waste of time. That's, that's my pet peeve. This three weeks of early voting is just a waste of time and money for people like Wayne and Applin and Long. And I mean, it's just a lot of money being spent. I mean, they're there all day Saturday for 12 people to vote. That's a well, lot. Bob, if you don't do three weeks, that's they say you're suppressing day. votes, which you're not, but that's what people try to say. It's all about money and trying to save the county money. And yeah, trying to save money. We're wasting money. Sitting here for three weeks like this. It's ridiculous. It's just, I mean, you got to, because you got to pay people to be there. Yeah. Which mm -hmm. I understand. But, I mean, all day Saturday from 9 to 5 and 12 people show up to vote. <laughs> that's, that's a waste of a day. It might be. One an hour. That's just unbelievable. <laughs> just about. Sad. So, be interested what they see, say tonight at the board meeting. But, I mean, they need to start encouraging their teachers to get to the polls. Well, you know how people are. They put things off to the last minute. Uh, I don't see it. I don't see a wave of people showing up. You on don't Tuesday. see a wave of people showing up the next uh, today no. through Friday and then next Tuesday. I don't see it. Yeah, okay. The trend's already been set. The trend's been set. Okay. They'll be lucky to get so five. They'll be, they'll be lucky to get five hundred by the end of the week. Yeah, so less than two thousand voters may decide this. Huh? Exactly. Out of seventeen thousand. That's that's a crapshoot. <laughs> yep. Yeah, you you figure with the you know usually the educators will show up uh, in you know I pretty mean, big right. time to, I mean, to vote to help improve the educational uh, I mean, right. facilities. I mean, and, if it's all about education. Where are they? Why aren't they vote? Don't know, Bob. Inquiring minds like to know. No, have you voted? 
I, I'm like you. I vote on election yeah, day. Yeah, I vote on election day. So all this early voting doesn't do nothing for me. I always vote on election day. I mean, I'm just a traditionalist. I mean, I've been doing that since. But talking to most 72. people I know, most people vote early and get out, get it out of the way. So, I mean, that's been the trend the last several elections. I mean, the early voting has been, I mean, look at the last governor's race. I mean, the early voting was on, out the roof. Yeah, you know, it was. So. Well, I've always said we're a, a big event uh, um uh, people in America, we like the Super Bowl, we like the World Series, like the the Final Four and stuff like that. <clears throat> and when it comes to elections, more people turn out for the presidential race than they do for the local local folks. And then in this situation, it's just a one-issue vote there to continue the uh, East Bloss to help improve the uh, facilities here and other items for the school board, like you know building that ROTC room and building and the Agricultural Center. Getting buses with uh, new new buses to, to replace some of our old ones that are falling apart and having air conditioning on them, plus other things that may come up as time goes by to see how much money's left. But that's just the way it is, Bob. Well, what what round do you think old Stetson Bennett's going to go in? Because it doesn't look like he is going to get drafted now. He's going to get drafted for sure. And Mel Kuyper says third round. I say I'm going to say fourth round. Fourth round. That's my projection. Yeah, the last talk yesterday was Seattle. There's a lot the of teams, there's there. a lot of teams interested. Seattle shown interest. New Orleans Saints have shown interest. I mean, I'm sure a lot of people. You know, if you're looking for a good backup quarterback, but you know, I'm sure he's looking for somewhere he can get on the field and play. So, but be interested to see which team. He's got to get in the right system. You know, yeah, he'll have to get in that right system. So, wishing him the best. I so, said. Boy, he showed he can play. I said they're very impressed with his combine workout. He had great physical skills there. It's just because he's 5'11". You know, if he was 6'2", 3", they would be salivating all over him. They don't ever say anything about Bryce Young. And yeah, Bryce, Bryce Young, yeah. he's not as tall as Stetson. Nope. Um, don't know, Bob. Bob, you know, Stetson wins two national championships back-to-back, made some just fantastic throws and, and late last-minute drives and stuff like that. Some people are just winners. You know, the bigger the stage, the better he played. I mean, right. go back and watch that Ohio State game, that comeback. Mm-hmm. Watch those passes. I mean, those 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 throws were on a rope. So, he's definitely a player, definitely a guy that knows how to read defenses, can win ball games. So, I'm sure he's going to get drafted. The question is, where where does he land? I'd love to see him be in Pittsburgh. I mean, Pittsburgh needs back. I said, Mason Rudolph, back up there? they still haven't cut him yet. They need to get rid of him. Mason Rudolph, please leave. Mm-hmm. Why Tomlin hasn't shown him the exit door yet? I don't understand. That guy's got to go. I have no idea, Bob. It just drives me crazy as a Steeler fan. <laughs> I want Mason Rudolph cut. I want him He's out. He's the backup, right? He's been a backup forever. He's the backup. He's made millions. Mr. Backup, huh? Millions sitting there holding a clipboard. Mr. Clipboard. <laughs> or tablet these days. So it's not clipboards anymore. It's a tablet. They're but not, we'll still call it clipboard. They're not winning any games with him. He needs to go. <laughs> All right, Bob, we're out of time. Let's get out. All right, have a safe trip up to uh, Burke County today. Yeah. Go Jackets. All right. 105.5 FM, WIFO FM and Jessup, world famous Butch and Bob show here on WIFO, brought to you by O'Quinn and Associates, Murphy Builder Supply, Vans Barbecue, and First Southern Bank. Now, coming up in the next 20 minutes or so, you'll have a chance to win a buffet to the um, uh, to Audemars Steak and Seafood. And you'll also have a chance to win some movie passes to the Strand Theater and pizza to the Strand Bistro. There's giveaways coming your way in the next 20 minutes right here on 105.5 FM and Jessup, Big Dog Country Radio, WIFO.